Yeah. All right. So next we want to look at the um, a couple different metalworking tools. What I have in my hand is a piece of um, angle iron, as it's called. It's actually a piece of steel. It's approximately uh, one by one by about um, an eighth of an inch thick. It was a pretty sturdy, heavy piece of metal. And uh, we're used to, you know, using our saws and stuff and, and chisels and everything to cut wood. We're going to try to do a little bit of work on metal here right now. Um, and with this, with this hacksaw, if you look really close right here, you can see that it's got some very relatively fine teeth. These are, this, again, this is a hardened steel blade. Um, and these teeth are much smaller than those you find on the uh, crosscut saw and the, the coping saw and all them because we're going to cut metal and we need it to, to really just tear away little tiny pieces at a time. So it's probably going to take us a lot more uh, cutting strokes to get to make the same cut, but on a piece of steel that, that's the way to do it. So <clears throat> first of all, I'm going to take my tri-square and hold this here and I can scratch a line on here as, as, some, as a place to cut here. Okay. And maybe you can see a little line scratched in the surface of that. Okay, and then we'll, <coughs> we'll put it in this vise. It works a lot better to, to put these pieces of steel into these metalworking vices um, as compared to the woodworking vices. They don't uh, grip as much in a small area. They don't exert as much, as much force. I get this guy on here really tight. That's, that's going to hold it really well for this kind of operation. Now the teeth on these are directional so they're actually just slightly beveled towards the front of the saw. I put it in and so the plan is for me to exert the greatest force going forward and ideally I would actually go like this and then lift up the saw, bring it back, put it down and make the next cut or the next stroke of the cut. But <clears throat> in real life most of the time we just kind of lift up a little bit, you know, kind of ease off and pull back, put the greater force on it to go forward. And I'm actually going to start, so I'm just cutting um, on a little bit of the metal at a time, a little backstroke here just to get started. And it's going to help a lot that this blade is under good tension here. I want to make sure that my saw has, has a good um, crank down on this screw really, really tight so the blade is held in there really firmly. If it's, if it's got a lot of flex to it, it's going to try to do all kinds of wacky things. You should be able to see that it's actually starting to cut well into the metal at this point. Of course, I could keep cutting and cut all the way through, but you should be able to see from this that I have cut all the way through this side of the angle iron. You see a big, a nice gap there in between. So the, the hacksaw did a really nice job um, with a reasonable amount of effort to, um, to cut that steel. Right? So that's partially because, um, you know, the shape of the blade it's also largely because the blade is, is a hardened steel and this is, this is not. This is mild steel. Is it, not, it has not only not been hardened, but this type of steel really can't effectively be heat treated. It doesn't have enough carbon in it. Okay, so there's, there's a nice cut with the hacksaw. And uh, <clears throat> let's see another couple things here. I'm going to go on this side of the steel. And I'm actually going to make a little cut with the, the uh, cold chisel. As you may or may not have seen in another video, the cold chisel has a very blunt edge here. I mean, it's, it is generally sharpened to a, a reasonably sharp edge, but in comparison to the uh, wood chisel, the, the angle here is, is very big, and thus this thing is, is very tough. So this, this edge here is not going to get dull that easily, even though we're going to use it to beat on a piece of steel. 
So if I've got this piece of steel here in the vise, nice and tight, I take, I take my big ball peen hammer. In this case, I don't know if the, if the camera can see it, but it's got a, uh, a, a weight of 40 ounces for this head. So if you, if you can you see that, zoom in 40 OZ yes. right there. Okay. And so that means this head is, is two pounds plus eight ounces. Right, so it's pretty heavy, and so it's going to take a little bit of force to actually swing it, but the idea is that's going to be a big payoff when we actually start cutting with it. Maybe you can tell it was kind of being knocked out of the vise a little bit. So I'm going to try to tighten up on it a little bit here. Okay. Do a little bit more. I'm not going to go all the way, not going to cut all the way through this because that takes a long time, an awful lot of effort. Um, but we will be able to see that we will have started a cut. see right there that I've actually started to, to shear away that piece of steel um, from the other one where I was hitting it with the chisel. Okay now most of the time we're probably not going to do this in the shop but it is interesting to see that how it can work and that's what a, one of the things that a cold chisel can do besides uh, slicing off the heads of rivets and uh, in general if you just want to make like a little indentation on here or something as part of a, a uh, function or design you can use the cold chisel to do that. Okay. That's good. <clears throat> Thanks for listening. We'll, uh, we'll come back for more. <laughs> <laughs>